I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. This is Anthony Rings from XDP. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. Corey Willis from TPI. I'm Drew with D&J Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. Diesel Podcast. You're listening to The Diesel Podcast. The Diesel Podcast. The one and only Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? Really excited to bring you today's episode. We have Corey Willis from PPEI. Corey, he's the founder, owner of PPI, and they're the official tuning company of the Diesel Podcast. So if you have a Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, Nissan Titan, Cummins, you got to check them out. They do a ton of cool things from mild to wild. If you got a race truck, truck you tow with, just want to get a little bit better performance out of it, they've got it. So Corey's going to talk to us today about some new updates on the 6.7 Power Stroke, the 5 liter Cummins Titan tuning, and the elephant in the room, which is the L5P and the question of, can it ever be tuned? Corey, how you doing, man? Man, doing good. I can't complain. Man, the year is going by fast, and it, it seems like they just go faster the older we get. Crazy as you know it. I didn't know if it was an age thing or just a life thing. <laughs> man, I think it's both. We're getting old, man. We're getting old joint problems and you know our parents warn us about this and we're just like no i'm gonna be good forever and then you hit a certain age and you're a little bit more sore the next day get tired a little you know quicker all that kind of you're stuff just old dude, and the next thing you know you're the old <laughs> man we wanted to talk to you about you know so much has changed since the last time you were on the podcast Corey, with tuning platforms and updates and all these new things man so we wanted to get caught up on, on what you guys have been doing. Yes, indeed, man. It has been absolutely crazy. The Easy Link crew has been going nuts. Even EFI has been going crazy. Everybody's just been hustling. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you see even HP tuners in the game going hard these days. So it's, it's cool because that kind of competition drives everybody, and you're just seeing the industry go ballistic. It's, it's a really good thing. Where tuning has gone, it seems like it's gone ballistic like so quickly from you know, the 17 18 fords to the the five liter cummins that's in the titan and the l5p stuff it's just it's, it's crazy yeah yeah we've been pretty much non-stop at it all especially 17 ford it was a uh it was definitely a character but it, it it came out really really nice and we were able to uh get all the trans stuff styled in um, we learned a lot of uh, information on it as well, um, as far as the the learning, the the way that the trans learns, and uh, it's just just crazy different different types of scan tools that wouldn't actually fully clear adaptive that was causing shift issues. Just really, really, really cool stuff that the 17 Ford brought around. So on the Power Stroke, are the tuning options the same on the 11 to 16s as they are on the 17 plus? Obviously, you know, some of the, the, the hard parts, the turbochargers and whatnot have changed, but uh, the tuning platform itself, uh, the, the way it at least maps out and hex and all that good stuff, it ended up being very, very, very similar. However, the security is what changed more than anything. Uh, the transmission controller was quite a bit different. Uh, the transmission itself isn't, you know, much different at all. Uh, if any, however, the the mapping and everything else for it was quite a challenge. They changed the logic up quite a bit on the 17 Ford trans side. But on the engine side, it wasn't it, it wasn't too 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 crazy. You know, a lot of guys are looking, you know, into tuning options on these trucks whether it's for towing or like a full-on build or something like that. So it's really cool to hear what goes into tuning and then giving the options that that these guys have for for these these trucks. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and you know, especially now that the emissions components are a heck of a lot better than what they used to be. Uh, you know, people can leave the emissions on on a lot of these vehicles and and have really, really, really good results. And that was one thing we've been focusing on pretty hard was uh, you know all the emissions present tuning, uh, which we were able to take and get all of our approval approvals and certifications and all that kind of stuff for. You know, we were able to do that for the Titan and the Ford and all of them. And I think, you know, as a tuning company, it's it's basically, I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but it's where things have to go if you want to stay in business. It's a really interesting thing to bring up because, mm-hmm. you know, say in 
at mid 07, 08, when these emission systems hit the trucks, I'm not quite sure that they were advanced enough to be able to, you know, be reliable or, you know, to, to perform. Because a lot of guys had issues you know, with the trucks back then. It definitely wasn't. <laughs> but, you know, you guys are seeing, you know, on these new ones, they are more efficient. You can do more with them. You can, yes. uh, you know, have that reliability on uh, emissions on, you know, current diesel truck. Totally, totally. You know, they've, they've really got it together now. Uh, I mean, it's 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 pretty rare compared to what it used to be to see, you know, a, a consistent failure of any sort on these trucks, you know, from an emissions aspect. And and it's not a, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's a necessity, you know, where I think everybody, you know, in our industry, which they're scared to death to even say the words EPA, but, you know, most everyone hates the EPA. The EPA has got to play a part in it, you know. I mean, things, uh, you know, you don't want to see <laughs> trucks just wasting fuel all over the place and, you know, no regulation whatsoever. I think the biggest problem we were having in that aspect was um, the EPA kind of not knowing what they were doing at the same time, which was, you know, quote, unquote, uh, overreach in a lot of aspects. But hopefully with everybody and all the tuners and uh, different industries and lobbying groups working together, you know, it won't be so much an overreach but an education to the EPA department to say, hey, you know, we understand we have a job to do, however, uh, we need to know how to efficiently do it. And I think right. that's where, you know, doing a lot of this testing like we are, providing back a bunch of data, uh, will allow for a performance community, allow for a racing community, but at the same time, you know, still have regulations in place that people can't just be going ballistic and hurting, <laughs> hurting where we, are, we live, you know. You know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, which, you know, in the last 10 years or so, if a truck had a DPF on it, it was, well, you got to take the DPF off to make any sort of power. It's just not going to happen. But from your side and, and what your company does, is that still true? You know, can these trucks make good power torque numbers, um, you know, be efficient um, and have a DPF on the truck? You know, it's kind of a yes and no. So it depends on what kind of horsepower we're going for. Uh, what I'm seeing is, you know, 500 horsepower, it's no problem. But we still run into the problem of, you know, is the DPS going to last longer or as long at that horsepower level? And the simple answer is no. And and the reason it's no, and, and it doesn't matter who the tuner is, it, it doesn't matter. It's a physical limitation. So what we what we have done is taken and something as simple as throw an air-to-fuel ratio gauge in it. Find out what the AFRs are, how lean can you get get the truck, you know, how low can you get soot uh, coming out the exhaust. And, you know, at some point in time, you just reach an efficiency uh, <laughs> issue. So whenever this truck is, is starting to have a rich condition, it don't matter if you throw more boost at it or you throw more timing. Regardless, the truck has reached its efficiency peak. And at that point in time, that's whenever the DPF is going to start stopping up. So can it do it in, in short bursts? Can you hit it, you know, quite a few times and it end up being – uh, able to clean itself out, not a problem. And it might do it for a very long time, but, I mean, at the end of the day, if if you're injecting more soot into the tailpipe uh, due to the just physical discrepancy of the vehicle, there's nothing that's going to prevent it from going a very long time. Uh, well, another thing we've seen, too, is that this 600 and 650 horsepower mark, uh, it does have a hard time flowing uh, through the DPS efficiently. Uh, we've taken and, and, and raised the F4 up close to three points with, with just going from uh, taking the pipe off and doing testing to putting it back on. You know, it, we, it, so yes and no. But for, I'd say, 90% plus of everyone out there, man, they could probably leave it on and be just fine because how many people are really wanting to start getting above that point? Right, right. Now, that's that's what I was thinking, too, with – you know, most guys just want a little bit more power when they're towing something. You get a little bit more efficiency and basically just keep the truck, you know, kind of stock, but just have a little bit more power. Right, and that's been a really popular thing lately, and, and I'm kind of glad to see things go that direction as well. It's It keeps things simple, and it kind of gets back into the old good old days of LB7 through LBZ of, you know, I put a tuner on my truck and got an extra 100 horsepower. <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't cost you a few grand. You know, to switch gears a little bit, there there's another platform I've really wanted to talk to you about, 
and that's the five liter Cummins that's in the Titan. What are you guys doing with that? What kind of what kind of options are you giving those guys? Man, it's cool. The Titan's super cool. So when they first came out, uh, I drove one, and, and on the first update from uh, from Nissan, man, I'll be honest, the truck drove terrible. It shifted bad. It was just, uh, and the, the truck's pretty expensive. So I was like, man, this is not going to have a market. Like this isn't something I'm going to entertain. So I laid off of it for probably, and I didn't touch that thing for probably almost a year. And then uh, we had a, uh, I think it was a military company or something that was outrigging a bunch of trucks, and they wanted us to tune them. So I said, well, all right, you know, I'll go ahead and get into it. So I picked up one locally, and uh, oddly enough, I ended up really liking the truck a lot. So that's actually what I daily drive now. Um, I'm still not the biggest fan in the world of how they look, but as far as how it drives, man, it does almost three-quarter ton things, but you know, in a in a half ton, I can hook up to to any type of you know boat trailer or, or you know things that wouldn't require a dually, so to speak. And this truck does it just fine. The A's and Trans with tuning shifts amazing. Uh, it's an impressive little truck, and we're we've been able to get a 140 horsepower over stock with it too. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and mine, I didn't know more than just put a tuner in it. You know, there's no uh, fancy parts put on the truck. There's no exhaust. There's just it, it's just I just put a tune in it, and I've put the 80 horse file that we have, and I've been towing with the truck. It'll burn the tires. It's it's fun to drive, really, really fun. It's like driving a sports car, you know, but you get all the amenities of uh, the turning and all the good stuff of a half ton. You know, it, it bridges the gap really well between, you know, uh, say a regular half ton. It may not have quite the power that, that you may need, uh, for towing or work or something like that and not necessarily needing a three quarter ton or one ton diesel day in and day out and the price tag that comes with it but a truck like the the nissan titan with the cummins engine it it meshes the two together it does it does it's the perfect it's the perfect bridge now on the transmission side are you guys seeing that the the transmission is able to handle that you know, 140 horsepower and have a good shift strategy and, and basically keep up with the engine itself. They're doing really, really, really well. Um, so far, I only know of one guy that's actually hurt his transmission with that file. And um, I, I think it hurt the converter. We called Suncoast, and Suncoast uh, already knew what the issue was and had a fix for it. So uh, that's that's pretty cool that if people are wanting to push the horsepower limits of these Titans that, you know, there's companies out there already working on having the trans aided up for it. But I think one of the biggest things to having that trans shift good was, uh, honestly, it was in the tuning. And we're not tuning the transmission itself, but there's so many torque limiters that are put in place right before the shift, kind of like uh, people used to say back in the day, all the, the Duramaxes with all their D-fuel. This... Mm-hmm truck did the same thing uh and what we see now is is basically killing off all those torque limiters uh just like in the ram uh with the with the a's and the, the three quarter and one tons if you kill off that torque limiter right before its shift point man it shifts nice and firm and crisp and and that's exactly how this titan is do you like the motor i love the motor <laughs> and it's a it's a it's a, I mean, it, it spins RPMs, it makes good torque, power. The turbocharger's super strange the way it functions, but uh, and there's a there's a YouTube video out there. I can't remember what it's called, top of my head, but if you watch the the logic of this turbocharger, it's just insane. So to be able to, to tune it, and we had a little issue right when we came out where uh, when you put it under a certain load, it would surge, and it was basically going in and out of wastegate mode. Super weird, but... <laughs> things you find out after you release <laughs> but it uh yeah but um man it's it's pretty cool that little truck makes some nasty torque i think we made 800 foot pounds of torque with it for the wheels it's ridiculous oh that's plenty of power <laughs> I mean, oh god out of a half ton yeah it's a that's a little party wagon oh yeah <laughs> well man there's there's a lot of guys out there that have l5ps and going on forums or social media really anywhere or talking to them they keep asking the same question is you know, what am i going to have tuning for what can i do with tuning what kind of challenges 
have you guys faced in trying to deliver that for the L5P owners? It is most certainly the loudest elephant in the room. I think it's more of kind of like a, a lion and an elephant made it, and then we ended up with the <laughs> L5P. <laughs> it's huge and it roars. <laughs> now, uh, so what we basically run into on this thing, to make a long story short, is the security um, and the legalities of, of, you know, releasing this thing. Um, can it be done? Is it going to be done? No question about it. Yes. It's it's tunable. It's doable. Uh, but then, you know, uh, there's, there's I guess you could say, right ways of doing things. There's wrong ways of doing things. And obviously, if you're going to be redistributing any type of products, you want to make sure that you do it all correctly and legally and all that good stuff. And that's kind of where the L5T comes into play. We have a we have a couple of uh, alternate solutions that we're looking at doing for L5P uh, that'll work and, and definitely have no discrepancies on legalities. And I, I think that's going to be what we end up seeing. I really can't say too, too much about it right now, but it is a – it's it's happening. I see people where they say L5P is never going to happen. It's, it's, it's no doubt 100% happening. Uh, two things. One, I, it's going to be more expensive. There's no two ways about it. It's going to be more expensive to tune. And then, uh, two, I could foresee someone having a small turnaround time on it as well. Um, I don't foresee there being any type of legal solutions anytime soon to take and just OBD flash this thing right out the box without a, w- w- without having to do a little bit of play by play with it. It's, it's just too many, too, too many things going to it to be able to do it that way and do it legally. You know, it seems on the tuning side that it could get more complex not just with what GM's doing, but why wouldn't Ford and Ram do the same thing with their trucks? Yeah, and I think it's really, it's a matter of time. So that's kind of what we have been preparing for now for, um, I'd say, roughly a year. You know, I, I expect, um, and I've heard a couple of rumors by, I think it was 2020 or 2021, that this game is going to be totally changed with the way all the modules handshake between each other and the security that they're looking at taking. And when that happens, uh, you know, somebody's got to be prepared. So uh, what we've been working on for about the past year, and I, I expect we'll be working on it probably another year and a half, is for when that happens. So we'll see. That'll be a that'll be a crazy, crazy time. And hopefully it doesn't happen. But if it does, then hopefully we won't be caught with our pants too far down. That's what's so cool about the marketplaces. Companies like PPI invest so much time and money and effort and resources into developing these products so when it does hit the market you know it it works it's been tested Uh, there may be revisions that you know that can happen but it's because the expertise has been put into it versus say you know sometimes being the first to market with something right exactly exactly and and you know what sometimes that lands us being one of the first people on the market and then sometimes it lands us a little bit you know after the curve but once we've got such a amazing team where we are like I, i'm i'm thankful to have the team that i have because i'm kind of just a glorified calibrator you know we just we've got a lot of awesome people in the office that work with us and uh it really helps out, you know, where where they can take care of all the customer service aspect of things, and uh, and and I can just take and focus on trying to make sure that we have a a future in this, you know. And then on top of that as well, for the whole entire tuning industry, so it's it's it, it does it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, but you know, if if we plan on having a future in this thing, not being short lived, you know, somebody's got to do it. We were talking. But you know, before the podcast, a little bit about PPI and n- new things you know, in the building that you guys are doing to be able to offer that great customer service. I wanted to ask you, what kind of changes have you guys done, and and how is it helping PPI in the marketplace? Man, you know, it, it's it's, and I'm sure you're well aware of how this all works. It's it's the beauty of growing. <laughs> The growing pains. <laughs> I think uh, I think everybody fights it, you know, and that's us. It's, it's every time I've thought that, you know, or we thought that we've had the system dialed in, then we hit another growth spurt or something happens or we release a new product, and then it just comes up again. So, you know, 
it, it's like it gets really, really smooth for, you know, six months or so, and then, boom, we're slammed with all kinds of stuff, and it's like, oh, my God, we got to hire more people, and, uh, you know, we need better tech lines, and we need – so, you know, what we've done uh, to try to combat that now is uh, – really put the guys in place and really opened our ears a lot more to the whole entire office of, hey, what what can we do to be the absolute best at customer service that we can possibly be? And through everyone's inputs at the office and uh, also some, some new hires that really help out with it, it's been it's been amazing. Uh, just this past past week we've taken and put in a new ticket system in place that actually whenever someone goes to the contact form on site and they select what their issues are, uh, it narrows down specifically what uh, what part of our department that ticketing system is going to go through. So whatever tech is most efficient at that area, they'll be able to handle it. Uh, because, you know, our, our thing is, is that as much as we want to grow and we want to support new platforms and calibrating, without customer service, there's, you know, there's there's nothing. Uh, you can't, you can't stay in business without, you know, prime customer service. So that's where we've really, really, really tried to, to focus in on. And we found a couple of areas that we were weak in and, uh, been able to really, really strengthen a lot of that and really just try to show our customers as much appreciation as we can, you know. And it's been really good. We've got a great customer base. Everybody's been able to, uh, to, to bear with us as we go through a lot of these growing pains. So it's, it's, it's been a juggle. But I'm seeing everything really, 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 really come into uh, amazing play. That's really cool. So if someone goes on the website, you know, fill something out and have a question and they have an LB7, that gets filtered to a team of people whose specialty is LB7 or the Duramax platform. Or it could be a guy with a 6.7 Cummins and he's got questions that gets routed to someone who their passion and their knowledge base is focused, say, around that, that 6, 7 Cummins or any of the trucks that you guys tune. But it, it's really cool that it can go to the people who are passionate and knowledgeable, and that's like that's their motor, that's their thing. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think that's one thing that we were doing before that, that we weren't being overly efficient with. Uh, we, we had basically the sales and tech department that was kind of all mixed in, in one, you know, but and, and my thought process was this is the most efficient way for everybody to be educated and know the whole entire aspects. But what we come to find, and, and you know, I, I think sometimes people look at us and they're like, oh, they should have no faults. They should, they should be perfect all the time, but that's just simply not how growing businesses operate. So, you know, over this past little uh, I would even be willing to say these past few months, we've really been able to dial it in and even separated all the departments now. Now there's a specific sales department. There's a specific tech department. And what I've come to find is that instead of everybody needing to know everything, it's a lot better for these specific departments to focus in on exactly what their job is. And that's helped out a ton. One thing i found is, you know, say I have a 6.7 Cummins, I'm not really paying attention to what the L5P is doing or the 6.7 Power Stroke. And if I call into places, you can tell right away if you get somebody who has general knowledge, say, of this 6.7 Cummins, or that's their passion, that's their thing, and they're excited about it. Exactly. And, and another thing that's helped us as well, because... Uh, you know, I seen. I don't get really on Facebook nearly as much as I used to, but you know, I I'd, I'd go and scan the groups and this and that. And one trend I was seeing was, hey, it's taking a little while for us to get our revisions from PPI. So I look at it and I say, okay, why is this taking so long? And what one thing that we had going on was, it was basically we got like a division one department that does the very basics, a division two that can do advanced, and after that it comes to me for all the the, the nastiness. So <laughs> uh, so to to make that sound simple. Uh, so, so what I did was, you know, I said a lot of these tech guys can handle, you know, if it's if it's something as simple as like a rail surge that just needs a little bit more uh, milliampere sent to the regulator to to help rail surge. So we took some of the the, the tech guys we have, and everybody at our office is pretty pretty slick. So we taught a lot of them, hey, you know, if a customer calls in with this basic issue, here's what you're looking for in the data log. This is how you correct it, and that has cut down tremendously. On revision. So now our, our basically level one, two, and three of calibrations 
can stay doing what we do, and the tech department right then and there can take and help the customer get their revision. And that has cut down tons of time, and this is all things we've been able to implement in the past, you know, I'd say roughly three months. And uh, it's just been really, really, really cool to see everyone in our office step up and, and take care of that and release the burden off of everybody. And at the same time, you know, the dealers and the customers end up with all the reward of it. So it's 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 been cool. You know, it's like I said, constantly growing, and, and we're constantly learning. You know, nobody's perfect, but uh, it is our responsibility to be able to take and try to perfect where there's imperfections by far. Another aspect to this, we've experienced the service at PPI firsthand and have had a lot of happy customers. And, you know, a, a guy might get a basic tuning package, but then two years later he's got twin CB3s, compounds, and modified injectors, things like that. But it's the service, and that's part of the purchase price. That's you buy anything. But you know, specifically with tuning, when you buy the tuning, you're not just getting the product and the expertise; you're also getting the service. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's that's that's what's pretty cool, man, to be able to take and support all these people as they upgrade their vehicles and not have to go through a whole bunch of hassle to do it. You guys are rocking and rolling over there. You got stuff coming out for the you know the L5P and the six seven power stroke tuning and and all these different things and the systems there at the shop to get people taken care of. It's going to be a good year for you guys. Yeah, yeah, we're doing all we can to try to be, uh, you know, more than just a tuning company, but also be, you know, proactive in the industry in, in every aspect that we can. We're uh, we're coming out to more events this year. Uh, we've actually uh, teamed up with some high-end racers and uh, getting back into the racing scene a lot harder. So it's 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 going to be a cool year, man. I'm really, really, really excited. It's going to be we'll sweet. Have, we'll have to sit back down towards uh, you know the end of the year and and see what new developments have happened in the ever evolving diesel community and and with parts and things like that and and it'll be great to you know, take those challenges head on see see what's changed from this podcast to that one. Yeah, I think uh, I think in another shoot, I'd say three months, we'll have a whole new line of conversations <laughs> with new development and all kinds of stuff along those lines. So we'll see what all that brings out. The, uh, we'll see. We'll see where everything's going, man. We're just trying to, uh, you know, be the best we can be and, and continue to grow, but grow efficiently. We appreciate you being on today, Corey, and, and what you guys do, not just for, you know, the tuning side of things, but for the whole diesel community with staying on top of platforms and and innovating products and also business systems so that customer service reaches a, I mean, the highest level it can get. So we, we appreciate your time today. We look forward to seeing what you guys do this year. And, you know, definitely want to sit back down with you and get uh, some more updates here. Man, I appreciate it. We're, we're going to keep on pushing, do the best we can, and see, see where this, this wild ride keeps going. <laughs>